All right, let me, uh, let, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is John Pingle. Uh, Jackie, I think, is the only one that I haven't had a chance to meet before, but um, I'm a director of corporate relations for the Institute. Uh, I get to teach a couple classes, and uh, I worked closely with Celeste on this specific project, which was uh, just an amazing opportunity um, and one of many that we find ourselves partnering with 3M, 3M Gives, uh, in an effort to support the students in the community. So uh, first, I just want to say thank you uh, for all of you being here today, uh, students, uh, 3M, and I see some of our nonprofit friends uh, joined us as well. Uh, today, we've got five teams um, that will be presenting um, what, what took place in their, their nonprofit uh, project. We have uh, five students on each team, and each team um, took a specific nonprofit, uh, partnered with them over uh, roughly eight weeks this summer in an effort to either provide some short-term uh, revenue or to uh, create uh, a long-term sales strategy that would benefit some long-term ROI. And so uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to have each team leader, so we're going to have five team leaders, take 15 minutes uh, to, they're going to share a, a PowerPoint on this, this Zoom meeting, and they're going to walk you through uh, different aspects of how they chose the nonprofit, tell you a little bit about that nonprofit, um, just the effort in building an implementation plan, um, and then what took place, what happened, what was the good and the bad, what did they learn, um, what impact did they have on that nonprofit. Uh, you know, I in Zoom, it, everything has to be somewhat structured, but I would just encourage you, especially our nonprofit friends and our 3M friends, please feel free uh, to make it conversational with that student, right? This is not an opportunity. I mean, it is an opportunity for them to work on their presentation skills, but this is much more about um, just walking through a strategy with you guys and also just enjoying this, this kind of tying a, a, a ribbon on this amazing opportunity. So. Uh, you know, there's a lot for, uh, for the students to tell you the things they learned, but also just to celebrate, um, you know, the opportunity they had to engage the community on behalf of U of H and also on behalf of 3M. So feel free to engage as you see fit, but we really want to try and structure each conversation of about 15 minutes. Uh, and then uh, the next student will then share their presentation and they'll, they'll do their intros and go through their process. Uh, so first, uh, I did. I saw Liju and Mary from uh, the Houston Food Bank, but I just want to acknowledge the first, the five uh, nonprofits that we partnered with. Uh, first was Foundation uh, for Hope Village, and then we had a partnership with Kids Meals Inc., and then a really cool organization called A Second Cup, then Elijah Rising, and then the Houston Food Bank, um, which is the largest food bank in the country. Uh, thank you again to Celeste uh, and 3M Gives, Jackie and the team. Um, such a unique experience for all of us. We're trying to, to make lemonade out of lemons um, with, with COVID playing such a, a large role and making such a big impact in, at the university, on the lives of our students, and obviously on these, these nonprofits. Uh, it, what's unique about the University of Houston student, and specifically to our sales program, is that almost 70% of our students are working part-time and full-time while they go through school. And so it puts us in a unique position because we don't require the students to get an internship as they go through our self program, but it's encouraged. And we've worked really hard with partners like 3M uh, to create unique, engaging experiences over the summer that pay well, uh, that give them the necessary uh, tools and experience they need to go be successful once they graduate. And, uh, 3M is, is one of the uh, best examples of what a summer internship should look like for a student. But the reality is the majority of these students that did get internships and even some of those that had part-time jobs, they lost those opportunities the second COVID hit. And it's very understandable why that happened. But that created an opportunity for Randy, Carl, Craig, and myself uh, to reach out to the partners, reach out to the people in the community and try and find a way to, one, help those students uh, replace that income that they were desperately needing uh, that would have come from those internships. And also, how do we replace the education experience? How do we give them some experience in managing projects uh, and working with organizations, understanding their needs, and also in selling? And so 
we were scrambling what feels like it felt like a lifetime of scramble uh, you know over the course of a month uh, we were reaching out to different partners and trying to figure out how can we make both those things happen how can we provide income for the students and then how can we give them the experience they deserve and that they need Carl was working with Celeste uh, on any number of projects that uh, we work on with Celeste and he presented to her this idea of can we make an impact in the, the community, in the Houston community, specifically the nonprofits. They were struggling with lost revenue or their shops being shut down or in situations, let's say like Kids Meals or Houston Food Bank, this huge increase in need of their services. And so we, we, working with Celeste, we came up with this idea that uh, through grant money uh, given to us from uh, the 3M Gives Foundation, we will use this as a way to scholarship students uh, and then put them on loan to five organizations that would make sense uh, and that had the, the biggest need. And so probably my favorite part of the you know, 10 weeks we were with the students was when, uh, when we originally started looking at all the different internships, or I'm sorry, the nonprofits, what we did is we had the students do research for like seven to 10 days, and then they presented to the staff the three different nonprofits that they thought uh, they could have the biggest impact and that they thought would have the biggest need for five salespeople to go work for them for the summer. And so just listening to the students' passion and interest in, and also just the, the data on what was happening in the nonprofits, it, at least for me, that was really impactful. But we, we looked at those 15 organizations and then we chose five and then we reached out to those five. And, uh, and as I listed before, we picked five uh, amazing organizations that have a heart for our community and are, are truly making uh, an impact in, uh, in Houston. And so um, from there, I just want to, uh, to give Celeste an opportunity. If you want to say a couple words, Celeste, uh, but I can't thank you enough for just walking alongside us as we were trying to figure out a way to serve the students and also serve the Houston community. So uh, for 3M Gives, but also Celeste, you thank you for uh, meeting the challenge and also just you know going above and beyond and helping us create the experience and also providing uh, necessary income to the students. So I won't take I won't take much time because I want to hear about your programs, but I will say that um, working with the University of Houston has been amazing. So it is you guys taking that additional step that has made the difference. So we wanted um, Jackie was working 3M has given a lot of money to around COVID and different areas. So this was an area that we wanted to focus on. And we asked the various universities and you guys really came forward with a program that both impacted all of you as a number of you students that are interns. Some are our incoming interns that we had to postpone the internship. So we knew we were creating a hardship that we we didn't like doing, but it's the, re, the facts, right, of the world we're in. And then just the faculty there at U of H that have really stepped to the plate and driven this program with the students. So that, that takes a lot. So we appreciate you all from many angles. So thank you. Thank you, Celeste. Okay, we're gonna have the first team go up. Uh, that's gonna be uh, a second cup. Teresa Garcia is the team leader. Um, and I'll, I'll let her take it from here. Teresa, you got 15 minutes. Awesome, thanks so much, John. Thank you for everyone for coming and joining us today. My name is Teresa Garcia and I am the team leader for Team Fuego. We had a second cup, which was really a privilege to work with, but before we go too deep into that, I just wanna go ahead and introduce my team. We have Robert Cantu. Go ahead and wait for us, Robert. He's a communications major graduating spring 2021. Dana Felipe, a marketing major, graduating fall 2020. Chris Tanzel, he's majoring in finance, graduating fall 2021. And Lauren Barrios, a marketing major, graduating this fall. An incredible team, couldn't have asked for better people to work with. Now, a Second Cup is a nonprofit coffee shop located here in Houston in a very cool neighborhood uh, called The Heights. It's 
focuses on putting an end to human trafficking. So all of the sales goes towards benefiting um, the survivors of human trafficking. Houston is actually a big hub for human trafficking just because of our proximity to the port and the border. And so it's a really important issue within our community. And so because it's such a big issue, um, a lot of nonprofits kind of take sectors of the process of uh, helping to first um, find people who are doing the trafficking all the way towards helping the survivors. And that's the part that a second cup leans towards. So once the survivors have been taken care of, received the medical help that they need, a second cup also has a nonprofit called Brazen Tables. And that trains these survivors to work in the hospitality industry so that they're able to stand on their own two feet and have a steady income to be able to go on and live the prosperous lives that they deserve. When we spoke with the people at A Second Cup, they said that the pandemic obviously hit them hard, just like everyone else. They were at only 35% of sales, of pre-pandemic sales. But despite that hardship, they said that still their biggest focus was to spread awareness of human trafficking throughout the community because even though COVID put a stop to a lot of things, it didn't put a stop to human trafficking. So we were really mindful of that as we thought of our goals for this project, which we really summarized as collecting donations for a second cup, establishing partnerships for them within the community and building a loyal customer base. And that's really where the spreading awareness of the issue came in. Now, in terms of implementing this plan, our biggest thing was leveraging social media, uh, using our own social media and connecting with our personal friends and family we found to be the most effective. Um, more than anything, more than just advertising the really amazing products that a second cup offers, because it's not just coffee, it's also jewelry and uh, clothing and candles. Um, it was about telling their story. And that is really what I think touched people and called people to donate. The next thing that we plan on doing was cold calling. Um, I think that's just the natural sales in us. We just want to cold call, reach as many people as we can. Uh, and then also volunteering with the second cup. That really helped us understand what their current um, client base looked like and help us know who is the right person to be reaching out to. Now with anything, there's gonna be things that work well and some things that could be improved on. One thing that worked really well for us was just the simple fact that we had such an amazing team dynamic and we were able to communicate so effectively with the leaders of a second cup. So those strong relationships we were able to form with each other just made it more natural to think bigger and um, say the ideas that we thought might have been crazy because we were just so comfortable with each other. Utilizing personal connections as opposed to cold calling was much more effective. Like I said, when you're able to tell a story and connect with someone, they were just a lot more likely to hear what you had to say and want to act on it as well. And like we said, social media campaigns were extremely effective for us. Uh, we actually raised a lot of money just by dropping our Venmos uh, on our Instagram stories and having personal connections just donate. Um, things that we may have gone back and changed, like we said, cold calling was not as effective as we would have liked it to be. And um, maybe those efforts could have been put elsewhere. Partnering with local businesses was also hard. We had the idea of having a second cup's coffee be put into some local grocery stores but those small local businesses, they had already really been feeling the impacts of the pandemic and what it, had, what it had been doing to their own businesses. So they were less likely to want to donate and want to take on that extra responsibility. So again, those personal connections, individual contributors were a lot more effective. Um, social media influencers, so reaching out to big bloggers was not as effective for us, um, but finding smaller bloggers, smaller influencers who are Houston based was very impactful for us. Um, I'll talk more about the Hungry Houstonian later, but uh, she's a blogger here in Houston that we were able to form a partnership with. 
And then one last thing that was pretty tough for us was the resources that a second cup had were very limited. And so it was hard at times to be able to act on some of the really good ideas we had. Um, for example, we wanted to host a webinar where one of the baristas from a second cup would show you how to make special coffee drinks with a second cup's coffee. And in order to gain entrance into that webinar, you would purchase a subscription for coffee. However, um, even though the idea seemed really good, we had a lot of interest, a second cup simply just didn't have the manpower to be able to provide a barista to do that for us. Um, so it's little things like that. And also um, the website that they use, it just wasn't very effective in tracking the sales that we made. So um, the number that we have, we estimated to be actually a lot larger than what is showing up just because of the way the system works. So a little technical issue there. Now the partnership that we formed that my team is most excited about was with Thrive Pro Bono. So the way this partnership works is that my team raised money for Thrive and Thrive would in turn go and purchase coffee and baked goods from a second cup and take those goods to frontline workers who are working to fight COVID. This was a really special one for us just because it is such a big issue. Um, helping our frontline workers is something that we were all passionate about and something that's also just a trending topic right now. Everyone sees the need to do that. And so the fact that we were not only able to help our own nonprofit, A Second Cup, but also support Thrive Pro Bono and their efforts to help frontline workers was really exciting that we were almost able to have double the impact. Now, these are some of the places that we have been featured. Um, Robert, one of my teammates, did an amazing job working with uh, a realtor in the Woodlands who um, donated $500 and in turn the Woodlands um, like neighborhood website allowed them to publish a press release on their website. So it was a great opportunity for us to get our name out there and also have um, the real estate agent be promoting it as well. We were also featured on University of Houston's Bauer College of Business Instagram. And like I said earlier, The Hungry Houstonian is a local food blogger and she's made the commitment to us to be blogging regularly on A Second Cup in order to further promote it. And lastly, we're still working on getting on Fox 26 News with Ruben Dominguez. Uh, we have a call with him next Monday and hopefully our news feature will be shortly after that. We're very excited about that. Now, as far as short-term ROI, um, we secured $2,320 through donations and then raised an additional $380 by bringing on new customers. So in total, we're at about $2,700. Now, our partnership with Thrive Pro Bono and A Second Cup continues all the way to the end of August. Um, so we're going to be continuing to actively raise money for them. And then even going past that, Thrive Pro Bono on its own raises about $500 to $1,000 a month, which will be used towards a second cup's goods. So that's an ongoing $500 to $1,000 per month that uh, a second cup will be getting through our efforts. Now, as far as long-term ROI, um, we had the idea of getting a second cup their coffee and their teas into local farmers markets. So we've already spoken with the local foods farmers markets and the urban harvest farmers markets. And we just think that's gonna be an amazing way to extend the reach of the second cup. Now, of course we have the Thrive Pro Bono partnership, which is like I said, gonna be ongoing an extra 500 to $1,000 per month. The Hangry Houstonian, she's made that commitment to us to be able to keep blogging, keep promoting and uh, we sold some coffee subscriptions. So those are gonna be at least a year long of a couple hundred dollars each. 
That's all I have. We had an amazing time. This was such a unique experience and really fulfilling to be able to give back to our community in such a unique way. So at this time, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. And I would just like to add for everyone on the program that helped this team out and they did an amazing job uh, despite the whole situation that's currently going on with COVID. Um, the restaurant industry, hospitality industry was hit very hard. So everywhere they turned um, to try to get some help from any kind of connections within the second cup community, uh, they were faced with a lot of no's. Like we're, we're doing our own thing, we're also suffering, et cetera, grocery stores, small businesses. But we were able to connect with Thrive who specifically helps those restaurants that are in need. So that was a very great partnership. And overall, I think that they were very flexible. So good job, you guys. Great job. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, <clears throat> just one question for me. If you could do one thing different, if we went all the way back to the, the very first week, what's the one thing you would do different was with a second cup? To go back to the beginning, I would have pushed harder to be working with a second cup from the beginning because initially we were working with a different nonprofit and upon more discovery, we realized that they weren't the right fit for the specific project. And I really believe that if we had been working with a second cup, um, the full, I think it's eight weeks, probably been almost only four weeks, I think our impact would have been far greater. So I, yeah, I would have pushed harder. If, I mean, the realization that it's hard to make, uh, the impact you want to make in in such a short amount of time, it's hard, right? Yeah. And especially when you got three, you were three weeks behind everybody else. <clears throat> great. Well, you guys did a great job. Uh, anything from anyone else before we move on? Now this looks great. It's fun to see what you guys were able to do in such a short amount of time. So very impressive. Yeah. Thank you, Celeste. Well done. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, uh, Teresa and the team. All right. Next, next up, we're going to go uh, to Akil and the Foundation for Hope Village. All right, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, Celeste, Scott, Bruce, um, welcome. Welcome to the 3M team as well. Uh, it's nice seeing you guys after such a long time. Um, I wanted to start off by introducing my team. Uh, we have Allison Palmier, uh, Tina Huang, Ritika Saxena and Gabriel Mesa. And so we are Serve Hue Team One Village Heroes. Um, we are here to partner up with a nonprofit organization known as the Foundation for Hope Village. Um, Hope Village is a nonprofit residential home and day program in the Houston area for um, individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And this was created around 1970. So Hope Village has been around for a long time. And then as you can see, these are just pictures from some of the citizens of Hope Village is, is how they like to refer to the uh, residents that live there. Um, you can see that there's a lot of age difference um, within uh, the different diversity within the crowd of Hope Village. And something to point out is that due to COVID-19, um, prior to us even like researching about the different nonprofits, and as we were researching more in debt, Hope Village, actually, we came to find out that 70% of the revenue for this nonprofit comes from their resale gift shop, as well as um, oops, their village cafe. So a big thing that to take into account is that this is mostly for the local communities as how they have a lot of in-person contact. And now due to COVID-19, because of someone, I also like went into that and I actually asked them more questions about like, how, how has this infected the villagers and citizens in, in total? And if you have a disability, you're more likely to uh, contract any sort of new disease, whether it's COVID or whether it's something else. So having any sort of in-person contact would be um, really detrimental for any of the villagers there, let alone just someone uh, going in there in risk of COVID. So due to COVID-19, all in-person contact for Hope Village has been denied. And so this was a big obstacle for my team and myself because prior to 
the entire project. We were like, man, we're going to go in there with a huge marketing team. I'm going to have a photographer out there. I'm going to have a videographer out there. We're going to get as much marketing material as possible. And just due to the, due to the rule, we weren't able to do any of that. So uh, what we, my, my team and myself were able to do is um, basically establish a website for long term. And so this came after a lot of research because we had to get in contact with PayPal. We had to get in contact with the Square website, get in contact with different websites. And myself, I never knew that um, in order to make a website, there has to go some sort of a, like, I knew there was a little bit of commission, but I didn't know that there were so many different commission contracts for a vendor. So PayPal has a percentage where they, you have to give 2.9% of all sales commission coming in. And so for someone like Hope Village, uh, a percentage like that is a little bit too high after getting in contact with the administration team. And so we were able to find out that Hope Village actually had a Square um, subscription as well. So we were able to go into Square and they have options to where you can actually develop a site. And in doing so, um, if everyone can still see my screen, this is the website that we had developed for Hope Village. Um, the mission of Hope Village is to assure that individuals with intellectual and developmental challenges thrive in a loving, safe, and supportive community in which they live, learn, and work with purpose and dignity. And within this, if you were to click shop now, you can see that this website is honest, honestly updated on the daily with different products, different resale shop items, handmade items by the villagers. Um, villager assisted items are what we refer to as handmade items by the villagers. And this not only gives the villagers an opportunity to, to develop skills and, and participate in things that our local communities would not be able to give them opportunities for, but also something that where they're kind of rewarded for their efforts in, in a sense that they are bringing revenue for their own program. So I thought that this was really, really nice. And um, these are just some of the gift shop items as well. If you were to click into learn more, this is what the Hope Village website looked prior to us uh, coming in, as you can see, um, there's a lot of links over here that this is normally what you would see within like a 90s or early 2000s website to where it was really not easy to navigate. Um, so we were able to go in and, and kind of bring like a user friendly uh, experience for anyone that decided to shop within Hope Village. Um, within the Facebook as well, we were able to get in contact with Hope Village's marketing team to where uh, a lot of people that still do use Facebook uh, were able to uh, know about the website and there are direct links for shopping now um, and uh, other sources and I'd like to show you guys this video from the director of community development at Hope Village. Her name is Stephanie Fontenot. Hi everybody my name is Stephanie Fontenot and I'm the director of community development here at Hope Village in Friendswood. We are a nonprofit organization that assists adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Uh, we have about 60 full-time residents who live on campus, and typically we also have 40 who come to a day program. And um, we also have a resale shop on site and a cafe where our villagers gain real life work experience. Uh, because of the pandemic, we've had to temporarily close down that day program, resale shop, and our Hope Village Cafe. And because of that, we've been losing um, some really important funding that we always rely on. So we're so happy that our group has been able to help us establish an online store to help generate some sales that we aren't able to do in person right now. Um, it's been a huge blessing to have this group help us out, and we are most thankful, and we're so excited to continue this online store even after uh, their time with us finishes. Thank you. Stephanie says hi to everyone. Uh, she wasn't able to join in on the call today. Um, but one thing I wanted to point out is um, from that website, what is, what is something that whenever you, you lead a company or you onboard a company that has really gone through a dramatic change within their website on something that's more user friendly, something more modern, what we were able to do is actually leave um, an onboarding process for the Hope Village administration team. So this is a graphic that the team was able to make, um, just a very easy tutorial on how to add products, how to remove items, how to change prices and quantities just within the website, because it can be a little bit harder um, to, to, to navigate, because it was hard for us even whenever we were learning the entire process. So I'm really grateful that the team, Ritika and Tina, huge shout out for making it look all pretty and stuff, it, it, it looks amazing. 
um, they were really grateful for having something with uh, screenshots on how to even navigate. So this is what the dashboard would look like for someone that was in control of the website. So this is what we see. We see the balances, sales products, any sort of rep reports for revenue. Um, and so this is just a, a, a graphic that the team was able to make to help Hope Village navigate and um, direct anything that they would need on the website. And last but not least, uh, this is the total of generated revenue that we were able to make after developing a website, as well as just reaching out using the sales team. So $3,127 of generated revenue, $1,500 of um, that revenue were from donations uh, from teams prospecting. So this was my team uh, happened to uh, be reaching out through social media and all together we were able to join, uh, raise $1,500. And this is just from simple Venmo requests. So, hey, can I request $1 from you? And we'll have some sort of a poll uh, online and to where our followers would just be like, yeah. And so from there, we were able to generate $1,500. And then also $1,627 of this was from online sales, just within the few weeks of developing the website. And as you can see, um, this is a website that's here for the long term, here for the long run. So I'm really, really excited to see how uh, more Hope Village can develop. And lastly, I'd like Rithika to uh, share her personal experience with um, Hope Village, uh, just to add like a little bit of a personal touch. Um, hey everyone, my name is Rithika. Um, so when I was in elementary school, middle school, high school, all of that, I was actually a Girl Scout. And I went all the way up to becoming a senior Girl Scout my senior year of high school. Um, I first came to know about Hope Village because of my leader. Her name is Helen Bear, and she had a really significant impact on me because she taught us about inner strength, integrity, hard work, and how with kindness comes power. Through her, I was able to do a volunteer project with the Foundation for Hope Village for my Silver Award. I was maybe 14 years old the first time I got to do something for Hope Village. And I remember thinking at such a young age, after spending a day with the villagers that these people are some of the nicest people I've ever met. And that still stands till this day. It was a really defining experience because I got to see that you can still have fun while making a difference. And I do have the power to make an impact in the world. I felt a connection to Hope Village and wanted to work with them this summer because Miss Bear had a really great influence and I'm grateful for that. And just two weeks ago, Miss Bear passed away from cancer. Although I did not see it coming at all, I'm really grateful to say that the team and I were able to allocate $250 from our donations in her honor and memory. So shout out to Ms. Bear. I miss you. And that is all from our team. Um, if anyone has any questions, we'd be more than happy in answering. Carl, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, Thank you for what a fabulous team. What what I'll say about the team is that they basically operated independently throughout the eight weeks, uh, and the results were were just not only incredible but permanent uh, in terms of the impact that, that that they had. And and I also can't under under as under indicate how upside down Hope Village found themselves. They, they didn't have, they, they, their whole world was turned upside down because they were dependent on people coming there. And they were, weren't able to do that anymore. Even the UPS couldn't come there when we first started, which was an interesting, interesting balance. But the team operated great. And also, I want to, I, I would be remiss if I didn't thank a couple of other groups. 3M, what a difference you made. Celeste, Jackie, I saw Jason joined. Uh, Bruce, uh, and I think I saw Scott on there, uh, Stephen, just, I've never seen a more direct win, 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 win. 3M wins, U of H wins, the students are huge winners, and we have five really, really great winners in our not-for-profit organizations. You don't get that kind of leverage very often, and, and, and it just, what, what a huge difference. Finally, um, somebody needs to thank John for uh, what he did to make this whole uh, summer work. So, thank you, John. John, thank you. We don't need to thank 
John. Yeah, we're good. We're okay. We Thanks, John. Yeah. We appreciate it. That's all. <laughs> all right, let's get back to Akil. Any uh, any questions on the project on Hope Village? I actually I do have a question. Hi everyone. Um, I know uh, somebody from Hope Village wasn't um, able to join, but I was wondering to um, kind of like learn more about their feedback. I know this is great work that y'all did. So I know whatever y'all can like say that they have shared with you, like how much this has impacted them. Absolutely. Let me pull up a text message um, from Stephanie. Uh, he said, this is all so great. Uh, both donations have come in and we appreciate it so much. You guys don't know the depth into how much you guys have impacted our organization. And thank you so much for the tutorial graphic that will work perfectly. Um, and this should be easy for our resale shop staff to follow. Great job team. So um, just following up, I'm sure that's just like some formality that she texted, but I know long-term that I told her and I let her know that anything in the future, if, if her organization desires, um, we'll be there to, to, to help and give back. And I'm, I'm sure that um, we'll have people, and as well as myself, I, I've kind of made myself the little bit of a promise that like, uh, I'm gonna dedicate my time more uh, towards helping out not only Hope Village, but any sort of local nonprofit that I can. Because in times like this, um, it really does uh, matter how we make use of our time. And um, really, really huge shout out and thank you to 3M um, for letting me uh, highlight and spotlight that about myself. So thank you. Thank this you. has been great to see. I love the fact thank that you, you guys have set them up to keep going. So that is beautiful. So um, sometimes you see people will come in and do something and then it's not sustainable, but it looks like you've done everything you can to make sure it keeps going. So nice work. Yeah, great job. Craig? Yeah, um, Celeste, I appreciate you saying that because I'm going to actually share something with this group. Y'all be the first group to be aware of this. Um, in fact, they don't even know, but actually Hope Village is going to be our client for the upcoming SSI fall semester class. Celeste, that you all uh, that you all sponsor. I had spent a little bit of time with Akil and then talked with Hope Village just over the last few days, and the work was so good. I think during the summer, but then also at the same time provided a lot of opportunity to kind of keep going. And so we said we're going to keep going, um, and so we're excited to work with them. Hope Village doesn't even know that they are our client just yet because um, I had talked to several folks and needed to get back with them this week. Um, but they are clearly, I think, aligned really well with what we want to do with the class. So we'll keep you guys posted. That's great. Great That's to hear. Is. Thanks, Craig. Yeah. Okay. Next team, uh, Griffin Ricks uh, and Kids Mills Inc. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's families is doing all all right and everybody's healthy before starting and introducing the team i'd like to thank 3m for giving us this opportunity to go out and really make a difference in the Houston community and giving 25 students an amazing experience um, so really thank you and thank you guys for your time and all the sponsors that came out and uh, are, are listening to us uh, in what we did this summer so introducing team two team drive through we have lorena moreas Stephanie Lara, Zaid Ashpande, Ryan Chada, and Griffin Riggs, who is me. And I had the privilege of being Team Drive Through's team leader this summer. So, what is and who is Kids Meals? So, starting in 2006, what began as um, two vans delivering free healthy meals is now up to a fleet of nine vans um, going through 43 Houston zip codes and, and since 2006 have delivered 6.7 million free meals, nutritious meals to preschool age children um, in poverty. And it's the only organization of its kind in the US. Um, so every weekday year round from 9 a.m. to noon, volunteers are preparing um, thousands of nutritious meals that consist of a sandwich, um, a fruit item, and then 100% juice and milk. So these are nutritious meals that they are going out and delivering, once again, free delivery to the doorsteps of hungry children. 
And so their mission is to end childhood hunger by delivering free healthy meals to the doorsteps of Houston's hungriest preschool aged children and through collaboration, provide their families with resources to help end the cycle of poverty. The last part of that, so it, it, providing families with resources to end the cycle of poverty, it's, it, it's more about serving meals. Um, Kids Meals Inc. really serves hope. It's more, it's, it's way more than, than giving meals. In and of itself, that's amazing, but it's, it, it provides these families with resources to, to really empower them and, and, and help them get out of the situation that they're in. And so one of the first questions we asked kids meals was, how are you guys doing with everything going on with the pandemic going on? So, and the first thing they said, that the demand's up over double. So every day, which is, I mean, this is a crazy stat, 3,500 meals a day, which is amazing that they did that. And it's, as of May, it's 7,000, over 7,000 meals a day is what the demand is a day. Um, so with that, you know, uh, the reason why they target preschool age uh, children is because they are not into the school system, you know, elementary all the way to high school, you're able to, the district provides food for you, provides meals, two meals. And since school has been out since, I mean, my goodness, for three months, four months now, that demand is directly to attributed to those students that would be getting those meals in, in middle school, elementary school, high school, are not getting it anymore. So the preschool age students, the, their whole families are being affected. And, and the great thing about Kids Meals Inc., there's no option not to, not to give these people meals. I mean, it, yes, they target preschool age children, but if anybody comes to their, to their warehouse asking for food or, or in need of help, they're not going to turn them away. And it, it simply wasn't an option to not meet this demand and it's it's a, it's a great organization and I'm so happy that we were able to work a, a partnership out and, and you know fundraising events are canceled so how are we going to be able to generate revenue to help meet this demand um, and so project overview um, so when we reached out to Kids Meals Inc um, a lot like Professor Pingle said we, we, we presented and we, we had some time to really think of, of what nonprofit to go after and, and Kids Meals Inc. was a great one and we, we had conversations. These are kind of our broad goals of, of what we wanted to do. Um, it, it took some time to understand what we could do, what Kids Meals wanted us to do, and what was realistic. So bringing all those together, um, we, we came up with an implementation overview, so an impl implementation plan. Um, the two ideas that our team and Kids Meals Inc. Uh, Kids Meals Inc. agreed on was um, you know, a social media challenge involving influencers that Kids Meals have and also just our personal connections. And then the big one was reaching out to Scott McClellan. I don't know if Bruce, you probably know Steven, you know, but HEB is a big deal down here in Texas and Scott is, a, is a pretty much a star down here. So Professor Webb has a good connection and we wanted to reach out to them. They already have an established partnership with Kids Meals, but they, we wanted to really have them step in and see what they could do during this time of need. Um, and so implementation plan, here's kind of what we had going forward. So to keep track of what we wanted to do, we have a, a Gantt chart, which I thought stood for something, but it doesn't stand for anything. It's not an acronym, it's just Henry Gantt. That's a little fun fact, but uh, it's, it's just a way to track your your uh, performance. So uh, I'd like to point out that these these dates haven't happened yet. So before HEB agreed to work with us, and before we got that meeting with HEB, we had Gantt charts literally just trying to get a meeting with HEB. So we had a bunch of Gantt charts throughout this, and the Gantt chart that you see right now is what we sent over to HEB in um, asking them to match donations up to $5,000 that we have raised during this bingo challenge. Um, and on the left side and the right side, you see the bingo that we, this is the social media challenge that we, that we uh, wanted to do. And for, let's say I would post this to my Instagram account. I would encourage my followers and friends to participate by donating. Um, on the right side is just monetary. On the left side, there's at certain action items. So you, you follow. In, in the left, the left of bingo is more for organizations. It's a bigger group of people. Um, 
to get involved in the one on the right is very very streamlined very very easy and uh i would ask my followers to participate and once they donate i would add their their name over that that circle and then encourage them to share it with their friends so it just it snowballs very easy to get the ball rolling um and, and it's a it's an easy way to cover a lot of ground with minimal effort and so the HEB partnership timeline another gantt chart once again we had one leading up to getting everything organized for our meeting that we had two weeks ago with um the head of pr for HEB. Um, Martha Barrera, and this is what we we also sent to her. We we asked for them to potentially sponsor a tote bag that would have be Kids Meals Inc. branded and be sold in certain uh, select Houston locations at H E B, and um, a, a portion of that, if not if not all of the of the money raised through selling. Um, those tote bags would go directly to Kids Meals Inc. So it's a it's a a good thought that we had. In unfortunately, right now um, they haven't given us a yes or no yet because of everything. It, they get all of their stuff from China, and that's just a big logistical um, issue right now. Um, but I think this is a, this was a great start. Just the meeting in and of itself was a great starting point, and. With that being said, you know, we, we had some wins and losses. So I, I, the HEB communication established once again was, was great. And thank you, Professor Webb. He knows everybody under the sun. And he, of course, knew Scott McClellan and was nice enough to reach out multiple times um, to get this, get this meeting. And, and finally, he, a, a lesson that we learned is if you make it, or if you go to the top, and we're taught this, we go to the top and then, you know, it, worst comes to worst, they just, well, they don't answer, but the second worst thing is they just push it off to somebody else, but now that's at the top of their priority, and um, so that was, that was a good, good win and a good lesson, and then an RSO on campus, so we, um, Zai, a part of the team, she brought up a great idea, you know, uh, let's, let's make an organization on campus. We have such a great momentum going forward. We have a great relationship with everybody at Kids Meals Inc. It's hard not to. They're all amazing there. Um, so an RSO, a registered student organization, we've begun the process of doing that. Professor Webb was nice enough to be our advisor. And building off of all of the great things that we did, this will go ahead and, and kind of make sure that that is implemented. Um, so for as long as I'll be in college, I, I plan to be um, Along with Zai and Steph and, and the rest of the team, we, we plan to really um, keep the ball rolling. And, and so some of the lessons that we learned, um, controlling the ambition, I think everybody can relate to, to this. When, when we, we came in, their guns are blazing. We wanted to do a lot of fun, cool things, creative things. Um, but it, we had to learn to control that ambition. It's not about us. We want to do all these cool things and stuff, but it, Take a step back, realize what you're doing and who you're trying to help. Um, it, that, that was a big lesson. And it, given the small time period, we really had to be realistic and figure out what Kids Meals wanted. Um, and then the short term ROI in the, <laughs> in the top right, there's a picture of us. There's three lovely looking ladies and some weirdo in a red shirt. We, uh, we volunteered at Kids Meals Inc. and it was it was great and it kind of goes back to serving hope. It's not just about serving meals. As you can see, we're, um, we're it's kind of hard to see, but we are packaging books, children's books. It's it's just so cool. I mean, it was awesome. It was a, it was a blast from the past because you kind of you recognize some of the books that you you read when you were when you were little. Um, but it's it's just the, like one of the days we volunteered. It's not a coincidence that of course we're doing something other than just serving meals. You know, it, it's great. So. The volunteering, the short-term ROI, just for us, honestly, it was a great experience. And then the monetary amount raised, so we have raised up to a thousand dollars so far through the bingo, and HEB is going to match that a thousand dollars. So now we're up to two thousand, and they're going to match what we make through the bingo challenge. So if we get up to five thousand dollars bingo challenge, they're going to match that. So it's be ten thousand dollars. And I'd like to point out that this is ongoing. So we just had this meeting two weeks ago with HEB. So we're going to keep this going, and I think we we should we should get some 
get some good uh some good momentum going and, and increase awareness for organizations. So I like to I know Steph Steph isn't here, but she she had a great story. Um so through our social media challenge, it, all of us were posting on our social media and um a youth leader at her church came up to her, handed her $150 in cash uh, out of nowhere. Um, really cool experience. Steph was blown away. I didn't mention it to any anybody at church. Um, just simply came up, handed him $150 cash, and said the youth group came together, pooled money together, and this is what we raised. And <laughs> this is a youth group. These are kids younger, way younger than me, probably don't have jobs. I'm sure they're going through tough times right now. And it was <clears throat> it was a cool experience <clears throat> uh, that happened. So I think that's what it's all about. And it kind of just really highlights how awesome the summer experience was. And then, oh, I'd like to also point out that there's, with HEB's partnership already established with Kids Meals Inc., we had an opportunity to update a link. So on HGB's link, there is a, a direct link to kids meals items that are, are already uh, procured nutritious meals that on HGB's website, if you go and, and purchase one of those items, HGB takes care of that and ships it directly to Kids Meals Inc. So we were able to update some lists and, and figure out what Kids Meals Inc, um, what the demand is right now for certain items. So that was another great, great aspect of it. And then long-term ROIs are those tote bags. Maybe not even specifically the tote bags, but just it, it's, it gets the ball rolling. It gets um, what products could we do in the future here. So um, I know I'm taking up some time here. I apologize. And then the last one is just establishing the on-campus student organization with the goal of raising $1,000 next semester. I can't guarantee, you know, when I'm, when I'm gone, if we'll be able to do 1000 But if I... Anytime I'm or the rest of my college career and being in this organization will have a goal of reaching $1,000 at least. And then finally, uh, I, I mentioned to Celeste in an email that, you know, that this summer we had a before everything hit, you know, we could, uh, it was going to be a fun experience this summer. And a lot of people, all, all the 25 students had internship opportunities. And it's hard not to kind of get negative and com complain and whatnot about the situation you're in but very quickly during this experience and understanding <clears throat> what everything that's going on um i have a roof over my head i got a great internship program that i didn't think that was going to happen um and kids don't even have the opportunity to get food so <sighs> it really put it into perspective and i think this is a good wake-up call it's humbling um, to, to experience this. And it's shifted my focus. Like Akil touched on it. It's, it's, it's one of my top priorities now, maybe even a career opportunity. This has been such a, such a fun experience. I think everybody will agree with me on that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I love the team. I love Kids Meals Inc. I love 3M. I love Houston. Thank you guys so much. Any questions, Professor Webb, would you like to say anything? Yeah, a couple, a couple quick comments. First of all, the team, really came together and worked hard on this in a short amount of time. But also the folks from Kids Meals were very oh, yeah. engaged with the team the entire time. They met with the team every time that they were asked. The CEO of the organization kicked it off at the very beginning and Kids Meals was, was very engaged. They, um, the bingo idea came about actually before HEB. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zai had a great uh, idea with the bingo card to be able to put that on social media and for people to have a fun way on social media to participate and help kids meals. And so then we took that idea and said, okay, let's see if we can get a corporate sponsor to get engaged with it and do a matching. And that's how HEB came along. And the head of public relations for HEB that Scott referred us to actually had volunteered at one point in her old neighborhood to give meals because she remembered standing in line at food banks when she was growing up. And so she was very engaged, very involved. And, and um, HB also donated $50,000 to Kids Meals 
um, as part of the COVID crisis for what they were doing for the community. So HEB was really engaged and Scott was kind enough to give us somebody that was really familiar with kids meals and was very engaged with, with the students and very involved. So the, um, they have agreed to do the tote bags. The problem is they're not, they don't do a run of these things very often out of China. <clears throat> and they've done this before for some other nonprofits. So uh, we're hoping that eventually they'll actually sell those kids meals tote bags at their HEB grocery stores and be able to raise uh, more money for the longer term. So that's the, that's the idea, but we've got to wait for a run for when they order uh, bags again uh, for the stores. But that's, that's a pretty cool idea. And I also have to say the kids really got, uh, the students really got engaged with this organization. And you, you can see that by establishing a student organization on campus for kids meals. So uh, we think that has some traction too longer term. So good job team. Thank you, Professor. And I would behoove, I would not be um, correct if I didn't thank the, the team. Lorena, Zai, Ryan, Steph, you guys were amazing, super flexible with me. And Professor Webb was right. Kids Meals Inc. was just way too nice. Like way too nice. They they I called and texted them so many times. I bothered the crap out of them, but they they didn't they weren't bothered by it. And they it was a good experience. So thank you guys so much, and thanks, team. Thanks, Professor Webb. Great. That's great. Thanks. It's a, it's kind of sad to see your comment at the beginning. Just the number of um, meals that they have to serve per day. It's eye opening. So nice yes, work. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Griff. Uh, let's move to the next team. Um, Elijah Rising and the team leader, uh, Della Zyla, go ahead. Hi guys. So since my computer uh, doesn't work with Zoom, I'm gonna have uh, one of our team members uh, share uh, our PowerPoint starting from the beginning. Before I go ahead and start, I wanna thank 3M for this great opportunity. I'm gonna share a quick um, personal fact. I don't think a lot of people know, but when I first, um, moved to the US, one of like my end goals was I wanted to study here in order for me to open a nonprofit back home. So kind of getting a taste of working with a nonprofit here really uh, made me realize how challenging it is and definitely how much work it's put into it and how beneficial it is uh, long term to these people that we uh, that all of these nonprofits help and definitely all the teams great job great causes and great nonprofits that you worked with um, and I'm going to go ahead and start so uh, in the pictures you can see okay. our team one second Adela really quick uh, Brooklyn on the bottom right of PowerPoint where the, there's a small slider and just to the left of that is a screen so go to the very bottom right of your PowerPoint there click that All right, go ahead. Perfect. So um, first picture is me. I'm a major in corporate communications and I'm uh, graduating spring 2021. Second picture is uh, Brooklyn Smith. She graduated spring 2021 and her uh, major is marketing. Third picture is uh, David Wen. He wasn't able to join us today, unfortunately. His major is interpersonal communication and he's supposed to uh, graduate this fall 2020. Um, Fourth picture is Isa, Isabel Uribe. Her uh, major is also marketing and uh, she's graduating uh, spring 2021. And James Clancy, he was also unable uh, to join us today. His major is also marketing and he's gradu uh, he graduated um, 2020 to 21. Last picture is uh, Professor Craig and I think he's already graduated, but um, yeah. So let's uh, uh, go ahead with the second slide. It's actually our agenda. I'm gonna go over it a little bit. First thing, we're gonna introduce Elijah Rising to everyone. Uh, we're gonna talk about the impact that COVID has had on the, the actual nonprofit. We're gonna talk about the first initial strategy that we had uh, going on uh, into starting this uh, internship. And then after meeting with uh, Sam, which is the mobilization director with Elijah Rising, she set goals and expectations uh, for us, which were kind of different from our initial strategy. And then we're gonna talk about the implementation plan and our long and short uh, term results, and also analysis of what we could have uh, done better. 
going to the third slide, I'm going to talk a little bit about Elijah Rising. So for those who don't know about Elijah Rising, it's actually a Christian-based nonprofit here in Houston. They started in 2011 just as um, a group of people that were just joining to um, kind of help people pray and intervene in uh, this brothels. And then going from these brothels, they actually had such connection with these women that some of them, they couldn't, they even had a language barrier. But um, just because, just because of how much they connected and how much they saw that these women, although they probably couldn't speak English, they just really needed help and needed to get out of that, um, that situation, they started Elijah Rising in 2012. So as uh, you can see in the picture, it, uh, they have over three, uh, 370 hours of prayer. They have many volunteers that have um, helped throughout um, these years. They have provided um, safe nights for all these survivors. And it's not just a shelter. They help these uh, sex trafficking survivors to get out of that lifestyle by also providing employment and uh, helping them move on uh, long, by helping them uh, long-term. As you can see, the last number is 2,242 women that, that have helped so far and still counting. Um, I believe only like during our internship, they hired two new uh, ladies that had helped um, that like they were a part of this, uh, the sex trafficking, they were survivors and they were hired and helped uh, out of it. Um, so yeah, the mission of Elijah Rising is to end sex trafficking through prayer, awareness, intervention, and uh, restoration. Um, they have an online shop. They have started this social enterprise. I believe Sam uh, was the, the, she's the director who started this idea. And it's, it's perfect because a lot of people wouldn't think um, how candles could help directly but it's actually these uh, these jobs and all these hours that they provide for them uh, that help these women kind of move out of that um, out of that situation where uh, I kind of heard some uh, some of the podcasts that they had and I was shocked and I'm I'm gonna admit I was a little ignorant before this uh, how it worked I have heard I had heard obviously of sex trafficking but I didn't know how helpless um, and obviously I still can imagine, but how, hope, how hopeless these women are into thinking, into like getting out of it and, you know, getting the help needed. Um, so the first candle, <clears throat> I decided to put it over there, not only because it's like their best seller, um, but also, um, Isa, can you move to the previous slide? Apologize for that. Um, so... The, the next one. Um, that's, that's fine, I'll just talk about it. Uh, so the, the, the previous candle, they named it cactus flower just because of um, how the cactus flower can blossom even without water and without much uh, assistance. So that kind of resonates with all these women um, getting help. Moving on to the next slide. Um, we're going to talk about how COVID has impacted Elijah Rising. Their store, uh, they're in store and they have van tours as well, uh, and in addition to a museum where they were getting most of their sales. And since that closed, that impacted that, uh, them tremendously because they couldn't, um, they couldn't let the empl employees and these women get affected from COVID and obviously they didn't want to risk themselves as well. Um, so that was a 75% decrease in total revenue. Um, however, the bright side, um, going to the next slide. Uh, so however, they did, uh, they did work a lot on their website. So um, that helped a lot and that made them work even harder into uh, making uh, making more revenue as far as online. Um, so going to the next slide, I got this picture from internet. Um, so initial strategy uh, was to make money. That was the plan, make as much money as we could short term. Obviously we started by doing research. Uh, even after we uh, select Elijah Rising as the nonprofit that we're gonna work with, uh, we were gonna identify buyer personas, which the ones that we came uh, up with were boutiques. They were definitely, they actually, Elijah Rising has currently wholesale partners that are boutiques. 
they also work closely with a second cup, which the first team introduced to you guys. Um, and uh, also, I would say real estate agents and then a personal network. So we did set some uh, short term goals as far as how much money we were expecting to make. Um, but it was definitely hard as far as cold calling and uh, reaching out to these people because in such few seconds, like you guys know how important the few seconds are when it comes to cold calling and you can't kind of deliver that mission and how much importance it has what they're doing in just such short time. So we did definitely get uh, the most feedback from, uh, from our personal network. So next slide, that's Sam. She's our main contact that we were during this internship. She's a mobilization director at Elijah Rising and also Adam, his uh, director of development at Elijah Rising. So after our first meeting, uh, Sam's goals were different as far as um, us raising revenue. She obviously wanted us to raise revenue, but she wanted us to focus more on long-term goals. So she wanted us to find wholesale partners and kind of build, build these relationships with these people um, so she could have these, uh, these relationships long-term. Uh, also, uh, at the time when we started, she did not have a page set up for wholesale buyers. So she would have to edit everything in the moment and it would take a lot of time. So we had uh, David focus on that and help with the website and kind of start that for her and also work on the discounts that we use during the internship um, and create those to boost more sales. Uh, she also, it was very interesting because in our first meeting, we, we went with our ideas and our goals and a lot of those aligned with hers. So another one was to find influencers for the first, they wanted to open the first uh, influencer program for Elijah Rising. Um, and then a drip campaign, they didn't have that set up and. Uh, that's very successful when it comes to um, gaining more customers and also keeping the relationships that you have with the current ones and also increasing the social media activity. So with the implementation plan, we went ahead, as I mentioned earlier, we went and identified buyer personas and also we worked on a wholesale pipeline and lead generating. We focused mostly on boutiques, but also um, also some, uh, I would definitely say some of our personal connections for sure. And the third ones, uh, we worked with Squarespace, which is the website that they're using currently. And it was really helpful because Sam was very open to letting us learn and kind of giving us access to the website and just kind of taught us where to find everything and how to, um, how to find everything that we need as far as discounts or to see who bought and uh, how, how much we were like impacting as far as sales. When it comes to marketing and social media presence, we uh, definitely dedicated time and effort. Uh, we posted on the Bauer sales page, we posted on our, all of our uh, personal pages and also Elijah Rising, they definitely reposted uh, all of our work and um, the pictures and everything that we were taking while in stores. So I would uh, say probably as a calculation that I did earlier, over 17,000 people that were reached just by uh, social media. And that's very important, even when it comes to awareness. I had a lot of people reaching out to me asking, um, asking, tell me more about the, the nonprofit, how can I help? And they even shared it themselves, even though they weren't asked to. Um, so we, uh, we help increase sales with our personal network and also volunteering hours. Elijah Rising had the, big, the biggest order up to date I want to say 7,000 uh, bags of uh, salt, uh, bath salt. And uh, our team helped in packaging and making uh, those ready and helping as much as they could. Going to the next slide, that kind of goes more in detail of um, the lead generating and wholesale pipeline that we worked on. Uh, we focused on five leads that we qualified and, um, and they, uh, these are the names over here, Blue Elephant. So as you can see, they're in different uh, cities uh, just because Elijah Rising can be, can be uh, accessible to everywhere in Texas. So all the cities that we could, we reached out. Uh, so these are the boutiques that 
mentioned that they were interested and will definitely uh, go on and keep a relationship with them. And as you can see, if they are closed, we are looking at a 5,000 to 6,000 per quarter. Um, and then we use the company exact da uh, data. We did a, a lot of research to what would be more convenient to getting more uh, data for the least amount of money. So we, uh, we could get 2,500 contacts out of this company. And I personally and some of our team have uh, promised to still help Sam and dedicate hours of uh, during our weeks to reach out to these leads and continue and getting wholesale um, wholesale buyers. Moving on, this kind of talks more about the Squarespace uh, learning development. I think it was really helpful because not only towards Elijah Rising, but it helped us learn more about it as well, like these skills we can implement long-term ourselves. Um, so definitely we learned some skills and then the drip campaign, though I would say it was definitely the highlight, um, will increase sales by 50 to 80%. Um, and this was some of the data that we uh, received. And also at the bottom, we can see the codes Houston 10 and Office Pickup. Uh, it's actually a code that um, we came up with to kind of deliver the products ourselves so we could boost uh, sales. So we're gonna be doing that this week and next week everybody that had used that code, we're gonna go to the store, pick up all the products and deliver them uh, ourselves. And then as far as social media presence and marketing, in addition to us posting everywhere on, so on our social medias and LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, we did help find two influencers. Um, and that was, uh, Isabel did a great job in finding these two ladies that also their goals and um, aligned with Elijah Rising and they're more than happy to uh, be part of this program. And uh, they also raise awareness. Um, we also, as I mentioned earlier, we also uh, raise awareness on social media you know, in uh, over 17,000 uh, people. And then using our social media, we definitely uh, raise sales by 5% after calculating everything on the website. And then going to the next slide, we can see over here, this is taken from the Squarespace. Give me just one second, sorry. I will move to the next room. I feel like the person cutting grass outside, I couldn't hear really well. Okay, sorry, technical difficulties. Um, so going to the next slide, as you can see, uh, this was taken from the, from the online store, from the Squarespace. Um, Sam did mention that although COVID affected their store physically, they have been making more sales, probably double the sales that they did last year, um, combining the store and the, uh, the physical store and the online store. So um, I think COVID as far as, um, as far as Elijah Rising really helped them focus and narrow down on the website and focus sharing more. And I believe since people were like more at home and they were buying a lot of candles as well. Uh, so you can see there is $8,815 in revenue. And then the numbers at the, in the end that you can see that are negative, those are just um, numbers that just show that people are ordering uh, not uh, such big orders, but it's not something negative. That's usually what happens when the revenue increases. Um, so going on the next slide, um, definitely uh, this was a great learning experience. Uh, we, I would say that Elijah Rising had a great positive impact on us in helping in uh, developing all of the skills. But uh, also what I think we could have improved, um, which was something that uh, Professor Craig and also Professor Pingle shared with us, was uh, mainly focusing on short-term goals kind of focusing on um, maybe just selling products individually. And I think that would have helped uh, raise more revenue and raise more sales. So focus more on transactional uh, sales. And then definitely I feel the time did not let us um, follow up with, uh, with the boutique. So that's why we're dedicating more time and kind of continuing um, continuing and uh, working with these partners and with these leads to try to close um, and have more sales and more revenue for Elijah Rising. Um, so Sam was definitely a great help 
and she was uh, there to answer our questions. And um, we definitely enjoyed this experience and learning more about Elijah Rising and um, how great of a mission this is to impact all of these lives. So going on that slide, thank you 3M uh, for everything. And uh, I think what distinguishes big companies like 3M is the, the desire of wanting to give back. So definitely this meant a lot to us and all of these nonprofits. So we're open to questions right now. Thank you. Great presentation, Adela. I'd like to say that, you know, the, the, the presentation, like there were some things going on with the PowerPoint, but you did a great job of staying strong and then moving when the lawnmower came by. And also I really like the uh, the graphics. So how did you guys, how did you guys come up with the, with those numbers, what, what application did you guys use? Uh, so that was just uh, taken from uh, their, uh, their website. Yes. Cool. Yeah, then, just a couple, couple things about the team. Um, uh, they, they did a great job. I, first of all, I want to echo thank you, 3M. I mean, Celeste and team, the support, as everybody has said, was amazing. The two things that I felt like the team really got a chance to experience, which is like so important um, uh, if you're going to go out into the business world, is one is they had a bunch of goals going into the project that didn't necessarily match up completely with what the client wanted. And so they adapted and they learned how to adapt really well in the midst of the circumstances. The second thing, and, and I noticed Sam alluded to or mentioned it in the, in the chat, which was funny. And this is another real life experience. You know, they're working with somebody regularly and then a vacation happens. And I know Sam was out of town for an extended period of time. And yet again, the team learned how to adapt. And I know from my own business experience, I'm like, well, that's pretty common. You know, you're working with somebody and then summer comes and schedules change. And, and I really think the team kept working um, and then, uh, you know, accomplished a lot in the time frame um, in terms of, uh, you know, longer term impact on the organization. So great, great real life experiences. I know yeah, Sam is the call too, and I don't know if she wanted to share. Sorry, I apologize if I interrupted someone. <laughs> I was going to say, we do have Sam on the call. And so Sam, if you want to say a few words. Yeah, I definitely do. Uh, can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. We have a group interview happening in the room next door. But I just want to say, I had a very limited schedule and very tight, a, a lot of like, we had to hire a new director, all this stuff. And so they were literally meeting me, maybe FaceTiming at nine o'clock at night sometimes, or just catching me when they could coming in so they were very very flexible and open to the goals that I set so I was super grateful and um, I think there was a really cool spirit of innovation with this team to say like how can we do something that maybe reaches, reaches these goals but doesn't non-traditional ways of, of, of growing income you know figuring out how to get these leads and pass them through the pipeline um, use even making TikToks with us and finding new ways to connect to um, the avatars that we put in place. And then we even made some changes, like realizing that the realtor avatar wouldn't bring us a, as much of a ROI as the wholesale avatar who's purchasing all the time. And so it was a really, really great experience. Everyone had a great attitude. I can't stress that enough about this team. Even um, I had like 2,100 pounds, pounds of like bath salts that we had in the huge record making wholesale. It was like a $20,000 $20, order. And these guys helped me carry it and put it on a pallet to load it up. So I. Samantha, you're on mute. Anyway, they just, they were amazing. They were really professional and uh, flexible, which I very much appreciated. So I'm really great for the, grateful for me to have the opportunity to have the help. As a nonprofit, we have a very limited team resources there's really just two people operating a business that needs a two hundred and four thousand um, dollar goal in order to hire the amount of women um, that are survivors of sex trafficking so we're really really grateful that we could have the help mm. samantha we appreciate all you're doing in the community thank you for engaging the students you guys are really doing a great job here so we appreciate you uh, any anybody else before we move to the last group no, I would just say I'm always so impressed with this organization. So Samantha, I know we've, they worked with you last year for SSI. So it's, it's fun to see this continued engagement. So you guys are doing great. Thanks. Yeah.
thank you so much. And, and the whole three experience with this has been such a huge blessing to Elijah rising, just to have some fresh blood and innovative, excited, enthusiastic students. I am very high energy as, as Craig knows working with me before. So to have someone that meets me at that level, the, the young blood has been like so fun to have around and to work with. Um, so we're really grateful to be, you know, allowed to have the opportunity in the first place. Great. Okay, let's move to our final group. Uh, Ryan Hastings is the team leader. Uh, the nonprofit is the Houston Food Bank. Uh, and I was the team leader over, uh, over this group. So Ryan, take it away. All right. Um, great job, guys. So far, all the nonprofits are amazing. And so it's been really cool because when we're on these five different teams, we're isolated to kind of our team and what we're, we've been working on. So it's cool to see what everybody else has been able to do. Um, so we're team five and our nonprofit is the Houston Food Bank. My name is Ryan Hastings. That photo is pre-mustache. Ryan, I was a different man back then. Um, and I just recently graduated and uh, got my degree in business marketing. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, John. Okay. I am, my name is John Wynn. I'm a recent graduate of the PES program. I'm coming into my junior year this fall at U of H and I'm graduating spring of 2022. I'm studying MIS in sales. Uh, hello, my name is Akane Mishima. Uh, I'm a senior and I'm majoring in marketing, graduating in spring 2021. I'm Alex Caballero, currently a senior, and I'll be graduating in December with a degree in marketing. My name is Hala, I'm a senior. Um, I'll be graduating fall 2021 with a degree in marketing. All right, as you can tell, they're very loud, very loud people. Um, <laughs> all right, so before we jump into who the Houston Food Bank is and what they do, um, we have Liju and Mary on the call as well. So I just wanna give a big shout out to them. Um, they worked so hard with us. Anytime I was there to call and annoy them, they would answer. And if it wasn't for them, none of this would've been possible. So I wanna give a huge shout out to them. Um, so in the beginning of the summer, as we all know, we were tasked with generating as much revenue as possible for two, over a two month period. And so initially we picked a different nonprofit due to our personal connections and our network, but that nonprofit didn't go through because they had some issues to work out internally. And so after wasting two weeks and ending up nowhere, we only had six weeks left. We knew we had to find number one, a nonprofit that was a cause that we really cared about. And then number two, a nonprofit that was attracting a lot of attention to make up for um, lost time. And so this is what led us to the Houston Food Bank. The Houston Food Bank is one of the largest nonprofits in Houston, and they receive, produce, and deliver food and food products to families in need. They had a 143% increase this year in the number of households in need due to COVID. And they distributed one day alone in May uh, around 1.5 million pounds of food um, this year compared to that same day last year. In May, So it's crazy to see the impact COVID has had on them and the way they run their organization um, from, you know, how much food they're producing or needing to deliver to the way people volunteer, how many people can volunteer. It's all changed a lot. Uh, our team was actually able to get a tour of the facility. Liju led that tour. Shout out to Liju again. Um, it was crazy to see all the different groups of people, all the different things that need to be working together just to have this place open and running uh, for a single day. It was really awesome. So we found the Houston Food Bank and we understand that it's a cause we support. The other reason we chose them was because of their Feed Hue campaign. Alex Bregman, who's an Astro, Astros baseball player, collaborated with the Houston Food Bank to raise money during COVID. Um, and at the time it was getting a lot of press, it was having a lot of attention. So we knew um, this would be a good thing we would want to attach ourselves to, to generate as much revenue as possible in the short amount of time we had left. Now, next I'm gonna show you a little video that a TikTok that John Wynn made kind of briefly explaining our project, 15 seconds, and then I'll go into what the actual project entails. Hey everyone, this summer, our team has decided to partner up with the Houston Astros, Alex Bregman and H-Town legends, Paul Wall and Bun B to raise $2 million to feed Houston. Join us in our journey, feeding Houston one shirt at a time. All right. Great video, John. Um, okay, so. <laughs> so here's a little bit about 
uh, what our project looked like. Now it's, it's going to get a little confusing and it's because it, it was confusing. So I'm going to try to explain it as best I can, but there were a lot of different moving parts. After we were able to get in touch with Alex Bregman, we settled in on the idea to create and sell a limited edition Feed Hue t-shirt. Um, so the next step was coming up with a design, which sounds simple enough, except it was not simple at all. So thanks to a connection we have due to a PES alum, we were able to get in contact with the owner of Active Athlete, which is a local streetwear store. Uh, they're also the number one distributor of Nike sneakers in Texas. So um, we got in touch with them and Active Athlete got us in touch with a local Houston rapper and philanthropist, Bun B. Now, Bun B's role was to help design the shirt, but more importantly, to help promote it for the Houston Food Bank. An active athlete's role was to pay for some of the production costs, but also sell it in their stores. After his team made the design, we brought it to the Houston Food Bank. We made some minor changes and we were ready to show it to Bregman's team. And then Bregman's team was not a fan of the initial design. So Bregman's team wanted us to have another local Houston rapper um, help promote and design the shirt. And that was Paul Wall. So now we have the Houston Food Bank, active athlete, Bun B, Bregman's team, and Paul Wall, all wanting and expecting different things from this design and from the shirt. This whole process, and correct me if I'm wrong, John, or anyone on our team, took us over two weeks, I think, just to come up with a design. Is that, that sounds accurate. Um, yeah, two weeks. Yeah, so once we finally were able to come up with a good design, um, we were ready to sell it. So here's the design of the shirt we came up with. Um, it's designed by a guy named Mike Frost, who's like a Houston, he's like a Houston legend apparently. So, what helped our team finally come to an agreement was remembering the whole purpose of this project, and that's to help fight hunger in the city of Houston. Um, the more time we wasted on the design, the less time there was to help as many people as possible. Now, we have this awesome design, but how do we go about selling it in COVID? What are our next steps? What platform should we use? Um, so this is where coming into making the website um, happen. So. You'd think setting up a payment link is simple and easy, but as Legion and Mary, I'm sure can explain, um, it was not as simple as you'd imagine. Legion and Mary were working with a third party to um, not only print the shirts, but to make the website itself. And so the first link the third party came up with was not anywhere near where we wanted it to be. And so another huge shout out to Legion and Mary for patiently working with them and walking them through and helping create the perfect website for us to sell it. Um, they even managed to get the shipping costs down to $5. So um, that, that was awesome. Now, after we were able to create the website, we were ready to finally start selling. One of our major selling points was social media. As I think every, non every nonprofit we've talked about so far, all of our teams have used social media. Um, we had a very strong social media presence, whether it's us posting, Houston Food Bank, Bregman, Paul Wall, um, everybody posted. I think there were, there were over 20 posts. So this is just a few of them. Back here, also, you'll notice Paul Wall shared my post. So I just want to point that out on the left-hand side. I had a celebrity share my story. I didn't gain any followers, but I gained some pride. Okay, so another avenue we wanted to work through were the different press releases. Um, it's a combination of hard work and a lot of luck to get on the Houston Chronicle, the Culture Map, all of these different press releases and articles posted about our um, shirt design and what we've been doing for the Houston Food Bank. Uh, it not only brought attention to us, but more importantly, it brought attention to what the Houston Food Bank does on a day in, day out basis. And it creates that residual customer that's going to come back. And then also, I want to point out on the top right, Liju um, made a newsletter, sent it out to almost every person that's donated to the Houston Food Bank in the past. And after he did that, we saw a huge spike in sales. Um, so that helped out a lot as well. So our next move was to acquire the different partnerships with companies so that we can sell our shirts at these locations, promote them in some way, create a discount. Um, Liju and Mary were able to land us an awesome partnership with Local Foods that's still being worked out. Um, essentially, they would sell t-shirts there, a certain, a certain amount, I think it was 75 shirts, and if they sell out, they'll buy more. So you're having this residual effect. And then with um, Active Athlete, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, we're partnered with them, so they helped cover some of the cost. Um, they donated 150 shirts to the Houston Food Bank, and then also they were selling them in their locations. And then lastly, um, the partnership we're still working out, but I just got a, another confirmation on it, is Star Cinema Grill. So it's like a, I don't know, Celeste, where you're at if they have these, but it's like a movie theater, but you send in, it's like a restaurant. It's really nice. And so they agreed 
that if uh, somebody shows up to one of their locations wearing a Fiat Hue shirt, they'll give them free, two free movie tickets. So little promotions like that go a long way and it's kind of a stepping stone. Um, all right, so what worked well and what didn't. So the connections we brought to the Houston Food Bank, I think getting Paul Wall involved was a big deal. Um, he helped create this awesome design. I think having these businesses get in touch with them was a, was a win for us. Um, having them featured, like I said earlier, having them featured in the articles, our social media presence was awesome. Um, I think just being able to actually have the shirt come out, it took so long to get the design because everybody wanted different things that when we were finally released to sell, it was like, I, I thought it would never happen. I was like, okay, this is not gonna, this is never going to happen. And it finally did. So I think having that alone was a big win, but um, what didn't work well, number one, we ran out of time. Uh, we didn't have the first two weeks of the summer because we spent it on a different nonprofit that didn't, that didn't help us. And then also, you know, everybody wishes for more time. I think in any role, you're going to want more time. And so that wasn't, that was the first thing. And then secondly, personally, I think that as a team, we should have focused more on partnerships and less on social media in the beginning. Um, social media was fun. It was, it wasn't hard. It's easy to make a post. I think if we dedicated as a, as a student team, not Houston Food Bank, they did it, but as a student team, if we focused more on partnerships, kind of like Adele, you were, Adele, you were showing us um, how y'all did generate leads. If we focused more on partnerships, we would have seen an increase in sales, I believe. So that's just. All right, so for the short-term ROI, we sold a total of 640 shirts online through the website, and the 150 were, that's not including the 150 that were donated by Active Athlete and sent to the Houston Food Bank. And so um, total revenue that we raised this summer was $19,900. Um, so that's what we were able to do in the short term, which is, um, is really awesome. It's something we're really excited about. And then in the long term, we still have these partnerships that are you know working out. Active Athlete uh, just let us know last night that they're planning on donating 200 sh more shirts to the Houston Food Bank. And then Local Foods, the 75 shirts that they wanna sell, um, that's still working out. So there's, you know, there's still more money and potential in the future. I think personally, um, the biggest long-term ROI before we even joined the project, Mary had planned on, I correct me if I'm wrong, Mary, but she had planned on doing a local Houston t-shirt idea. We didn't even know about it um, with a local Houston artist. And so her experience to be able to work with us and for us to be able to help them kind of use this shirt experience as a prototype, um, shoot it out there, a trial run in a way so that when they start making other shirts, it's going to be a lot more smooth of a transition. I think that long-term effect is going to be the most valuable for the Houston food bank. And that is it. Um, I sped through that really fast. My timer right here says 12 minutes. So I talked for 12 minutes straight. That's great. Um, I want to thank uh, 3M for doing this, for giving us this opportunity to not only make money in the summer when nobody else is getting jobs, um, but also to allow us to, help out a nonprofit that we really care about. Like I mentioned, we got a tour of the facility and I think after all of us walked away from that tour, we were like, holy cow, this is a big deal. Like they're helping so many people. Um, I think it's like every dollar feeds a family in need. Uh, I think that's the ratio. So to be able to raise $19,900, that's a lot of families. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy with what we did and I really wanna thank Liju and Mary and everybody else that presented today. Um, it's really touching to see how much of an impact we made and it's been interesting to work in a nonprofit space. Um, uh, it's been an amazing experience. I want to thank you guys. And that is it. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Leisha, is there anything uh, you want to add? You, Mary? Sure. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all you guys, uh, the students especially, um, jumping in very quickly and uh, making some great connections for us. Um, but and especially to 3M, you guys um, giving uh, people an experience to work in a nonprofit um, and really see the impact you can make is something that's very clear, obviously dear near to my heart. I'm sure to Mary's as well. Um, just having that exposure is such a tremendous deal. Um, money raised um, is fantastic, but also to encourage people to see the nonprofit space as a viable professional career is super um, inspiring for us. Um, but we're really excited about the shirts that have been sold and the continuing ongoing partnership. So thank you guys for choosing us. And um, we hope that we get to work with another group next summer, if that's possible. Thank you, Liju. Thanks, Liju. Thanks for letting me annoy you nonstop. <laughs> 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 as, the, 
as a team leader for, for this group, um, <clears throat> our goal was to try and be as focused on short term as possible. If you look at the, the previous four groups, there are so many long term, they're building websites and they're, they're really thinking long term out for this team. We wanted to go big or go home, right? Uh, and so there's a lot of complications that can easily come with that. Uh, trying to put so many people and resources in place, bringing all these different groups together, uh, including, you know, three Houston legends like Bragman, Bun, B, and Paul Wall. There was so much at play and so many moving parts uh, that can be really uh, crippling, that can be really uh, tough to manage. And so the students did a great job at just being patient with the process, uh, being where they needed to be, when they needed to be there, and then just, just being patient to allow the process to, to play out. And again, a lot of that is just due to the, the support we have from the food bank as we were moving along this process. But uh, no doubt, you know, from a short-term revenue standpoint, this team just blew it out of the park. Um, <clears throat> and again, they took a big shot and put all of it on a $25 shirt with about three weeks to try and sell it once everything worked itself out. So uh, kudos to the entire team, meeting regularly, being patient uh, with the process, but also just going out there and fighting to do something big. So I think the team uh, did a fantastic job with it. Any, any comments on this team specifically uh, from anyone else? Ryan, I have a question for your team. Uh, it sounds like there was some conflict involved with the shirt design. How did you guys, knowing that conflict was going on, how did you guys facilitate the process without getting involved and mixed up in that conflict? Yeah, um, that's a good question. It was really tricky because you don't want to step on anyone's toes. You didn't want anybody to back out and get aggravated with you. I think, so I was the point of contact for Paul Wall and for Bregman's team. I wasn't talking directly to Alex Bregman, I wish, but his team. And so I was able to see what both of, the, both of them wanted. But I think personally as a team, number one, we wanted to make sure that the Houston Food Bank was happy with the shirt and that it's clear that it's for the Houston Food Bank. And then number two, the, the other thing is Bregman has final say on the t-shirt design. So no matter what, he has to be the one at the end of the day to say, okay, I think our team was okay with whatever design. Um, we just wanted to sell the shirt, you know? And so for us, it was like John said, it was being patient, um, making sure that we're not rushing anyone. Uh, that's why it took two weeks because we were just kind of giving them their time to think about it. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Great. And anybody else uh, for this team specifically? Again, it's impressive. I love the amount of money you guys raised. So that's that's great to see. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so uh, it's it's eleven forty. Uh, we've gone through all five teams, twenty five students, just making an impact in the community. Um, just from on behalf of the institute, I can't thank three uh, M. Three M gives enough. I certainly cannot tell the, uh, the nonprofits that are on the, the call now what a, uh, a pleasure it is to walk alongside you guys as you're trying to make an impact in, uh, in our community. And for the students, uh, man, thank you guys for being engaged, being patient with the process as all of us were just trying to figure out how to make this thing work, right? Where Carl said it was a win, 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 win across the board. Uh, you guys are amazing, so I appreciate your effort. Uh, Celeste, is there anything, uh, or any of the three members, is there anything you'd like to just say to the group, to the nonprofits, please feel free to, to use this time now. Hi, John. I'd like to just jump in and, and say, first of all, outstanding work by all of the teams. I, I was just really impressed with the quality of the work, the passion that you had for what you were doing. So I think that was absolutely wonderful. And, you know, Carl mentioned, and I'll just repeat, I think, John, you just mentioned it as well, but this was truly a win-win, I think, for everyone, a, a win for the nonprofits, a win for 3M, a win for the students, a win for the school. So we were just happy that we could be a part of that. Um, 
you know, uh, again, you know, as we kind of started to work through this whole COVID situation, Celeste called and said, I have this great idea. And, you know, I've been working with the University of Houston. They have this great idea. Should we do it? And we were just thrilled to do it because I think it, it did a couple of things. It gave um, the students an opportunity to have a meaningful experience this summer, which is absolutely wonderful. I think an, an important part of the educational process to be able to apply what you've learned in the classroom to, um, you know, to a real life situation. And I think it was great for the nonprofits too, because nonprofits were definitely struggling um, and continue to struggle during this time. So I know that that was great to have your talent and expertise to help them kind of work through some of those challenges. So I just want to say kudos to the, the staff at the University of Houston for coming up with this incredibly creative idea. Um, you know, kudos to the students for being adaptable and flexible and sharing your time and talents with the, the nonprofits. And thank you to the nonprofits for, you know, uh, hosting and allowing the students to come in and spend the summer working with you. So thanks again. It's been great seeing you guys on this call. It's absolutely wonderful to see, you know, how the, the things that we do in terms of grants actually come to life. So thank you, Celeste, for all of your work. Thanks for bringing this wonderful idea and project to us. And um, I'm going to hop off now. I think I have another call. Uh, but again, great project, great work, and it's so great seeing you guys. Thank Take you. care. Thank bye -bye. you. Thanks, bye -bye. Jackie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks. Jason, great did work. You, Jason, did you want to say something? I felt like I saw you ready to jump in there. I think your, your mic is off, Jason. Uh, I, was, I still can't hear you. All right, let's, uh, Bruce, anything you want to add? It's so impressive. It was uh, really nice to see the uh, great progress you've made as a team. I had no idea uh, everything was impacted by COVID so much. How about now? How about now? Got you, Jason. Yeah, we can hear you, Jason, if you can hear us. I'll give it one last shot. If not, no, I don't think you can hear us. There we're going. All right. So, hey, um, Jackie, great words from Jackie. So I don't, I'm not going to reiterate what uh, her message. But, you know, gr great work for great causes to all the teams. Um, our, our CEO recently asked 3 Emperors, you know, how are you going to make an impact in your communities? And you know, what a great way. I mean, we strive to take a leadership position in the communities we serve. Um, this is a fantastic partnership, right? I mean, our, our ROI on a program like this is through this partnership. Um, so this is, this is great to see. And it's interesting, you know, it's a series of small wins. Um, that's, that's how 3M was made, right? That's how most of these companies that you guys will have the opportunity to go uh, to work for as you transition into the workforce. Yeah, that's what this is all about, a series of, uh, of, of singles that, you know, start to find their way to the gap as you tee the ball up. So um, great, great work. Love to see it. Uh, can't wait to, to see more future forwards. Just appreciate everybody's time. Yeah, I, I'd just like to echo some of John's comments and thank uh, Celeste and Jason and, and Bruce and Jackie who uh, had to jump off. Uh, we couldn't have done this without you. And uh, for you all to step up to the plate the way you did, and do this not only for, for our students, but for the nonprofits, you can see it made a huge difference in the lives of both, both uh, the students and the nonprofits, but also countless people here in Houston. And so we thank you for that. We thank you for being such a wonderful partner and uh, we're, we're grateful for you. So, so, so thanks guys for stepping up. <laughs> Yeah, and, and one final comment, going back to what Griffin had said before, I think it was you, Griffin, just the fact that doing this project during this very difficult time does put life into perspective for all of us. So you guys make me feel like I've been sitting here in a box too long. I need to get back out there and do more volunteering. So <laughs> nice work by all of you. Very, very, very impressive. And again, thanks to John and Randy and I don't know, Craig, all you guys for helping. This has been amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great job. Well, guys, that, that ends our, uh, our project. Uh, it is certainly not just because the presentation over, but we can't tell you how much we appreciate each student working every single day, dedicating time 
to this, uh, leading up to this moment. Thank you to the five team leaders uh, for representing your team so well today. I appreciate that effort. Uh, go Cougs, uh, and uh, we'll see you, you guys all real soon. You guys all be safe. Uh, find some time to, to spend time with your family and friends and, and find a way to stay healthy. So we'll talk to you guys all soon, okay? Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Thank guys. Bye.